and being that we're kind of like giants to them, they're scared of us. So they'll either fly away, run away, camouflage, they won't move, so sometimes it might be hard to see them, all right? But you never know. You never know what kind of animal you see, all right? You have a better chance of seeing animals if you use low, quiet voices, because if they're really loud or walking really loud, that's kind of giving away that lots of giants are walking through the trail and the animal's gonna go, ah! All right, and they're gonna hide. Um, but also look around, also use your ears, because there could be some birds calling, there could be some frogs, cicadas, okay? So you never know. Um, so what kind of animals do you think we may see today or, or live here in the Great Swamp? Yeah. Dragonfly is very good, especially when we go to our pond or the streams. You may see some of those guys flying around. A toad? Oh, you do have toads in the forest. Sometimes we'll see them, yep. Um, beetles? Beetles, yep. Arcelot? I'm sorry, what was that? Arcelot? Arcelot. It sounds like not an American animal. Think of animals that we'll mostly see in New Jersey, so are we going to see any elephants? No. Are we going to see any tigers? No. Tasmanian devils? No. Now, so think of animals that are most likely to be seen here, yeah. A deer? Deer, like those guys, yep. Mosquitoes? Mosquitoes, yeah. you guys came to a swamp, so you're guaranteed to see a mosquito today. Yeah? Just stretching? Yeah. Geese. Sometimes we'll see a geese. A snake. A snake. There you go. And now let me. Any of guys are? Of you guys are not snake fans? Well, just to let you guys know, I'm not saying that you have to like snakes, but just let you know, none of the snakes here in the Great Swamp are venomous. I like. I like. So we don't have those in New Jersey, or I should say, in the United States. What is some of the? Snakes native to this We area. have garter snakes, ribbon snakes, northern water snakes. They do not live in the United States. And the con they don't live in the United States. They do not live in the United States. Smaller snakes, that's all we got here in New Jersey. So you got garter snakes, ribbon snakes, milk snakes, uh, northern water snakes, green snakes, brown snakes. They're really tiny. Um, and the two venomous snakes that live in New Jersey are the northern copperhead and the timber rattlesnake. Alright, those are the only two venomous snakes in New Jersey. They are not found here in the Great Swamp because the habitat's a little wet. Not the prime habitat that they want to live in. They're in like sunny spots, rocky habitats. Um, but just because they're venomous doesn't mean they're going to come out of trees and bite you. Okay? They don't want to waste their venom on you because we're too big. So they're not just gonna bite you just because they're gonna bite you, all right? And any snake, in fact, is not just gonna come out of nowhere and bite you because you're too big, all right? What's the point of biting you, all right? But if you pick it up and go, oh, look at you, 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 all right? They're gonna bite you because they're like, ah! What is this thing picking me up, all right? How would you like if a big giant picks you up? You probably would kick it and scream and probably bite it, right? No, Kind of the same thing with the snakes. They're just trying to protect themselves. So you don't have to about anything flying out of trees and attacking you, because that only happens in movies, and we all know that half the things you see in movies are fake anyway. Okay? Um, so as we're walking the trails, we want to make sure that we stay on the trails. We don't want to walk off the trails because why? Yeah, you could get lost if you keep walking off the trail, okay? Especially if you're not with a guy that knows where they're going, all right? Um, what's another reason why you don't want to walk off the trail? Yeah. Because you might see an animal and provoke it. We might walk into animal habitat and disturb it, okay? Anything else why you don't want to walk off the trail? Think about things we don't want to touch. Uh oh, might be poisonous plants. Like poison ivy, you got it. All right, uh, poison ivy is gonna be off the trail. If it's on the trail, we make sure that doesn't happen. Okay. Um. So yeah, and I will definitely show you what it looks like in case you don't know what it looks like. 
um, some bees and wasps make their nests off trail in the ground, so you want to step off the trail, and, you know, step on a nest because that's how you'll get stung. Alright, so those are a lot of main reasons why you want to stay on the trail today. Okay, so um, you guys are going to follow me, yeah. and uh, hopefully we see some really cool stuff. I have some stuff in my bag to show you as well, along with some pictures. And again, my name is Megan, in case you guys have any questions along the way. Alright. There you go, watch this stop. Can everyone see that? If you can't see, you're more welcome to step uh, forward. And I have a picture of it. Right now, it's growing on the ground. You can get closer just so won't be But it can grow on the tree, kind of like a vine. And the poison ivy vine is hairy. It's got like furs and fuzzy stuff on it. Alright, and that's the only type of fuzzy vine that's um, in New Jersey that's poison ivy. So if you see a vine that doesn't have hairs, it's not poison ivy. So in the winter time, if you see a fuzzy vine, because all the leaves will be gone in the winter time, that's a poison ivy vine, do not touch that. They say there could be the oils on that vine too that you can touch and then get the itchy rash if you're allergic or highly allergic to. About 85% of people are allergic to poison ivy. So not everyone gets the rash, okay, but maybe eventually down the line when they get older they could develop the allergy to it. So when it first comes up, it's red and shiny, all right, and then when it's done kind of growing and gets to full size, it's green just like what you're seeing now. And it grows white berries, which are food for the wildlife, and the vines even food for like rabbits. So it is its food. So if it's off the trail, we leave it because it is a native plant. It's supposed to be here and provides food for the wildlife. So that's poison ivy. So it's got three pointed leaves. All right. Um, there are other plants that have three leaves. So if you're not sure if it's poison ivy or not, just don't touch that all. But the three pointy is kind of the key factor of identifying. It's always good to know that. See trail markers or called trailblazers. So it just tells you how to get to point A to point B so that you don't get lost. So sometimes you go to a park and you get a map and there be different color trails. Some might be longer than others, some might never come back. They loop up to other trails. But all our trails here, most of them actually come back here. There's only two trails that you actually have to get to them by other trails. But um, this trail, the red trail and our green trail, all link back to the building somehow. Um, so the orange trail is our biggest trail. It's about 0.6 miles, so it's not even a mile. And it's one big loop. So we're going to be following the orange squares. So if you've never been here before and never been to a park before, and you've always picked a route. Okay, I'm going to go on the orange trail because that's how long I want to go. All right. You would follow those squares and always get you back where you started, for the most part. <coughs> I always like to check before I... Um, you, you can actually pass this back and smell it. Anyone allergic to nuts, period? If you're allergic to any nuts, just don't touch it at all, just to be on the safe side. Actually, I think we won't touch it, because okay. they don't know if they'll have a reaction. Then we won't do that. Yeah. But if you... um. If you're with your parents, okay, and they might know and they're with you, um, these, these hickory nuts actually have a nice smell to them. You can walk around and let them smell it or maybe let them pass you and smell it, maybe. Let me see if I can get a strong aroma so they don't have to touch it. Well, even the smell might make them have a reaction. I don't yeah, know. maybe better not. Yeah, yeah, yeah on better the not. Side. Side. I don't want anyone having any it. problems on here. Yeah, I'm like, oh my goodness! Yeah. Yeah. I would feel so bad. But uh, this is actually food for the wildlife. So squirrels, chipmunks, deer, turkeys, bear. Even bear will eat nuts, too. I'll leave it there. You can just look at it with your eyes. I'm going to say no picking, no collecting, only because the swamp is actually a, a, a land that's set aside to keep safe. So we call it a refuge, OK? So that just means that we don't want people walking here and picking flowers and mushrooms and taking animals or other wildlife out of the, um, the swamp. Everything has to stay here. They're safe. Um, it's kind of like a preserve. 
So that's why there's a sign that this is no picking, no collecting. But you're always more than welcome to take pictures. We always say, yeah, you can take as many pictures as you like. Early, 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 early summer. Um, there might be water here. It's dried up right now because this is actually, um, it's called a vernal pool. It's called a means spring. So it's only filled up with water about six months out of year, depending how much rain and snowfall we get. But when that's filled up in the spring, it's a great habitat for animals to lay their eggs in because there's not a lot of predators that live there um, that would like to eat eggs. For example, like fish. All right, fish like to eat animal eggs. But fish can't live out of water, so they can't live in a pool like this. They have to live like in a pond or a stream or a lake where there's water all year round. So because this is a good habitat to lay eggs in, we do have frogs that will lay their eggs in here sometimes. Uh, there will be at least two species of frogs. And most importantly, there is a type of salamander that lives here in New Jersey that's actually an endangered species in New Jersey. You guys know what endangered means, right? Yes. yes. Can you tell me what endangered means? Yeah. Like extinct. Was that extinct? Yeah. Yeah, they could become extinct, you're right. Meaning there's not many of them left. And this is a great area for them, being that this land is protected, they don't have to worry about losing their habitat because that's one, one of the main causes of why animals become endangered or, or even extinct. Um, and it's called the blue spotted salamander. He's about three to five point five inches long. So it's probably about he could get about that big. Is he poisonous? No. And then for something to be poisonous, it would mean that you would have to eat it to get sick. For example, like that red mushroom. That big red mushroom. You don't want to eat that red mushroom because I believe those guys are poisonous mushrooms. Okay. Um, but uh, it's called a blue spotted salamander, and we have seen them here. Um, and they have laid eggs in vernal pools like this one. So this is a good thing to see because we want to see that. We want their numbers to come back up. Stop. We don't want to lose these guys. Because everything in nature is important. Might not be your favorite thing, but it's here for a reason. That'd be one big worm. If we can worms go down there, absolutely. Yep. Okay, but they didn't dig the hole. Okay, that's actually dug from a chipmunk. And they have little little um chambers or burrows within that. They might have one where they'll sleep, they might have another little burrow under there where they'll put their food. So that's where they hibernate? Yeah, yep, they'll go under, they'll go back under here, and actually for the winter, they'll close up that hole. They'll close it up for the winter time. Um, so they're not really true hibernators. They'll wake up anyway, eat, they'll store their food down there, and they'll eat. Okay, they have pockets in their cheeks. They could probably store about three nuts per cheek and go down there and go back out, look for more food, go back down. All right, so they'll make a nice pile of food for them for the winter time. But yeah. That's where they'll st spend most of their winter time is back down in there, too. Oh, I'm thinking of crazy things. Wait, you got to use the magnifying glass. That's a good idea. It's called a dog bane beetle. He's actually on a, a plant. This plant right here is called dog bane. Whoa, this is a little wow. dog bane. It's a little rainbow I can't color. see. Once you, actually, once you guys seen it, how about you guys step back so your other it. other friends can see the uh, the dog bean beetle. They're really cool Some to see. Some of you guys are I love their colors. Wow. The Jelani oh, is. That's so my adorable. You guys, no turtles that will come out of the pond, which you're going to see shortly, and dig a hole and lay their eggs. Um, in fact, I have some old turtle egg shells to show you. Okay. I'll take a few steps back and I'll come to you guys. Now, these are just shells. There's no one inside of it. One, they're either dug up because animals do dig up turtles' nests, like fox or raccoons, and eat some of the eggs. And sometimes they'll find like the egg shells around the um, nest or if they hatch. And when there's, um, they hatch or get eaten, they kind of look like popped balloons. 
because a turtle is a type of reptile. They lay leathery eggs. They're not like a hard egg, like a, a bird's egg. So like if you crack a chicken's egg, it's like shells fall over the place. These just go like a balloon. Just keep like this yeah. Why don't you get these eggs? Mm -hmm. We found them um, here a while, a long time ago. I haven't seen any um, evidence of turtles in this spot. Well, normally every year we do get that dig their nest here because it's a perfect sandy warm spot that they can dig their uh, nest and they probably lay about 50 to 80 eggs. Sometimes it's neat to show the groups that. I actually have a picture. I think I brought you out. I actually have a picture of a snapping turtle laying her eggs. You guys ever seen snapping turtles before? Yes. We might see them today when we go to the pond. They get really big. And I saw one one year by that bench laying eggs. Yes, ma'am. How come it looks like there's a hole and then looks like the... Right here? No, the hole and the... Oh yeah, those are their eyes and that's their nose. I want the hole for That's the shell. It's part of the shell. Right here? Yeah. Yeah, yeah this is for the neck. So the neck comes out of the shell. Oh, so they the push. shell is, is as part of their body. They can't leave their shell, but it helps protect them. So after the live animal show. Yeah. So there's a picture of a snapping turtle laying their eggs. Oh, this is a So, you know, snapping turtles, yeah, they'll snap. All right, but when they're in water, they're not likely to bite us because we're too big and they'll just swim away. But when they're on land, they're, they don't have, they can't move very fast. So if you, especially when they're laying their eggs, I definitely wouldn't want to pick or go near a snapping turtle because they will snap. That's just because they're trying to protect themselves, not because they want to bite you. The when they're, on, when they're in the water, they don't bother you. Because they're like, oh, you're too big for me, I can't eat you, I'll just swim away from you. Okay. It's okay, it's okay. It's okay. Okay, that's nice. Oh, oh, that's so oh my cool. god! That's oh, bad. That was a garter. What about the recorders? Did anyone get that? I got it. You see how it went away? It saw me. No, it's like, oh, and it left. See, so it didn't okay. go after me. It went the opposite yep. went way. So they're yes. harmless. Uh, they're harmless. Yep, the garter snakes. All right. Because you're not so doing they, your job. See how the snake didn't go? Oh, person. He went, ah, person. Phew. All right, because they're too big for it. So that's why I didn't bother. Um, you taking recorder? You doing your job? Okay. Don't drop it in the pond. You're going yeah, to get Yeah, watch it. If you're having any drop cameras, it in the pond, you're going to go get it. Put it around your wrist. Put yeah, you the will. string. Okay, good. Going right in. <laughs> Be quiet. Maybe they'll come out.
Mushrooms. My kids, remember that? Mushrooms. Yeah. Germani yeah. read about it. About it. I mean. Did I tell you that? You blow like this. Look, did something come? Did I tell you if you blow? All right, so they just do this. Like Nothing's coming out. Now. Like a wind tunnel. So it always blow, and that will. It's a lot more easier to get around. Right? Oh, yes. Let's see if I can take a picture. Yeah. I'm watching just because they want to. They only thing accidentally hurt it or, you know, you're going to mess with it. They come and sting me. Yeah, it's almost over. You gotta change your expression because you're looking, it's, you're stressing yourself out. It's not that serious. Yeah, you need to this is no you're different from walking around. Overcoming. Filmed it. Filmed it. You went to the park, right? You went to the park. You went to the park. Uh, guys, move back. Don't, don't lean on that. What is your problem? You too. Stop leaning on that. Lean back. You too. Don't lean on it. I'm not a good swimmer. Okay, guys. So, um, I'm going over here. I have a picture of a Come on. We're on their board. Um, so here's a picture. If you've never seen a painted turtle before, and no, we didn't oh, paint yes. them. No one painted them. They just call them painted turtles because it just looks like someone painted nice stripes on their neck. Okay. Um, and when they're alive, when you see their underbelly called a plastron, um, it looks nice and bright, um, like orange or yellow. So I actually have a turtle shell from oh. a painted turtle. They're done. Okay. And it's a real turtle shell. If I'm, I will never put a living animal in my bag. Um, so, of course, the turtle's no longer alive. Is that a real, is that a real shell? It is a real shell, yep. A real painted yeah. turtle shell. You just said it died. Was it died? I don't know. There could be many reasons why it died. It, it could have died because it was sick, blood. naturally, or maybe something got to it. Because there are animals that could eat turtles, like raccoons. Is that so hard? Like yeah, well, actually, I'll let you guys feel it in a minute. Basically, they eat bats. No raccoons eat. Uh, they'll eat berries, they'll eat garbage, they'll eat crayfish, they'll eat turtles. Okay? Uh. Well, yeah, I mean, raccoons don't really mingering around the uh, ocean, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, so turtle shells are actually bone, alright? Um, now do you think turtles can walk out of their shell, like hermit crabs can, to find a bigger shell? No, they can't. So you never will ever see a turtle walking around in their boxer shorts. Naked. Because their shell is attached to their body. Turtle can't be naked. Alright? Um, if you feel your backbone, all those bones, Alright, in fact, I'll show you. This is another turtle called a box turtle. Oh, the backbone. See the backbone? Oh my god. Now, we don't kill any animals here. We always so find them so they die no longer alive. They die naturally? It could have been naturally. It could be because something got to it or got sick. Could be many reasons why the animal died. Oh my gosh, the backbone. So, the backbone is part of their body. Oh, okay. there. so so the shell is part of the body. That's why we can see so, the backbone. Exactly, and when they when they're born, they're about a size of a quarter. So when they grow, their bones grow just like our bones grow. Right? We get taller when we grow. Turtles just get bigger. Right? The shells grow to the point of where they're meant to be the size. All right, so if they're only meant to be this big, that's how big they'll get. They're not going to keep on growing and growing and growing. They'll stop at a certain point. So, um, painted turtles live in water. They have a very um, slim, lower um, shell. What, what is that thing hanging out of it? That part of the skin. That didn't, that that didn't uh, leave it? the shell. Like mud? No, it's Something. part of the skin. Yeah. So question, when it, when it does die, that's when you can collect the shell. 
Um, yeah, we'll leave it outside. If we find a turtle, we'll leave it outside and let nature clean it. Uh -huh. We'll break it down and turn the soil and, all the, and leave it. We'll probably leave it under leaves for a while, just so that nature can take care of it for us. And the and shell never decays. No, because it's bone. Oh, Animals okay. can eat it, though. Oh. Animals like uh, squirrels and uh, chipmunks can eat bone. Oh, oh shell. Because they're very sharp incisors, oh. rodents, and they'll eat bone to get the calcium that's in it to help them help their bones. Because sometimes we eat stuff to help our bones grow. Rodents will eat. Oh, like oh. like Tasmanian devils, they eat they um they they eat dead animal bones. Yeah, to get there's the, a good to example. Get the nutrients inside of bones. That's a good example. Yeah. yeah. How did the pick up the shell fall off? Oh, sometimes it happens when it's no longer alive. Shedding. It gets weak. Yeah, these are called scoots. Okay, and um, when it's no longer a living bone anymore, it does dry up and scutes do flake off, but this is the actual bone right here that you're seeing. Alright, box turtles actually don't live in the water, they live in the forest, so their colors that you see helps them camouflage in the forest. So they're not excellent swimmers because they have a big dome, they won't be able to swim very efficiently like painted turtles can. So you guys can, um, Feel the two shells, feel the difference. You can feel the backbone. And once you One feel time, it, yes, step back so, so that your other friends this. in the back here can have a chance okay, to feel it too. You. Make sure you can, you know, feel both if you like, so you can feel the difference. And uh, we do, we do see box turtles once in a while walking in the forest. Mr. Sure. I'm feeling the backbone. Mr. Yeah. When I felt it, it felt scaly. This smooth. Yeah. Yeah, right, so yeah this one's scaly. Well, that yeah, one's reptiles smooth. do have scaly right, sure. skin. So somebody can, else touch it too. You can feel more of the scales on. Um, oh man, that scale, the scale's falling off. What? What is right, this? Sure. Look fake. Sure. What are these shells? Look too. fake. Yeah. It's very smooth and shiny, so that's probably why it looks fake. You don't have to push me. But, and it's old, it's dry, oh, come on, please. but it's a real please. turtle shell, I promise you that. Are they related, like a distant cousin, or...? They're just different species Fish turtles. Species. Yeah, they're just different I species. I can feel the backbone. Yeah, you back. can feel the backbone. That's so cool. <clears throat> and once you've felt both turtle shells, if you could be so kind and let your friends in the back kind of squeeze in there so they can have a chance to feel it, and then we'll move on. Did any turtles climb back up on there? No. Oh, bummer. I like to see you guys. Oop, there goes a scoot. There goes a scoot. The scoot fell out. That's okay, because that's going to happen. Did you have a chance to feel it? Did anyone have a chance to feel the turtle shells? Yes. Okay. Make sure I didn't leave Ooh, anyone scaly. out. You want to take a picture of it real quick? I'm recording. Oh, you're recording. <laughs> awesome. An infant's helmet. Now as you leave in the hospital. You're going to start the rain. <laughs> All right. When it rains, it absorbs the water. And um, if you look down, you're going to see these flowers that are kind of curved, like it looks like a tail. It's actually called lizard's tail. It kind of looks like a lizard's tail. A little white flower that kind of... Oh, it's what, what are these? Is this bamboo? No, guys. Well, the tall grass is called reed grass. Reed bamboo grass. is much thicker. Much thicker stem. Oh, yeah. Hey, I'm from one job. Welcome, one straight line. One straight hey, you're cutting. Line. Stop cutting. They're cutting in front of us. He said one straight line. Try not to trip on the roof. Look at in front of us because because I want to call to what he stopped calling, but we might hear him again. It's called a uh, cat bird. Okay. Cool. And if you guys ever heard of mockingbirds before? Yes. yes. They're kind of like in the mockingbird family. They just don't mock uh, things like uh, uh, mockingbirds do, but they do make a lot of squeaking, squawking sounds. And you're gonna know why they call it a cat bird. <coughs> what does it sound like to you? <coughs> Sounds like a cat, right? Yeah. There's a bug in your head. That's kind of like um, saying, oh, you're gonna. 
and they don't be too much happy about seeing things. But they also make, this is the sound I was hearing when we were walking. Oops. Maybe he was communicating. Yeah. And uh, another bird that we might hear. I've been playing for a minute and 70 minutes. It's a common yellow throat. They call him a common yellow throat. He's got a white throat. The boy has a like a black mask, the female doesn't, but she's got the yellow throat. And it sounds like they're saying witchity, 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 witch. Can you guys hear that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, I heard the witchy So birds, oh, there's so many different kinds of birds here, and with all the leaves, it's sometimes really hard to see them if they don't move. So we listen. And some birds you can actually put words to, just like this one. And it helps us learn to identify birds. Not all birds you can put words to, all right? But you start learning them that way. So if you hear a bird and you want to know what it is, just let me know. I might be able to play it for you. Foil, foil, because of all these, it looks like foil. Oh, oh, you like. No, but more harder. Sorry. Oh, it's so good. Oh, it's getting. Look, moss is getting on there. Yeah, it's actually turning into moss? moss? Soil. When trees fall down and they die. Rotten long. Hey, my friend, I'll be right with you, I promise. Um, yeah, they are turning into soil. So, um,. That's how fresh soil is made. It's like a whole. It's like re, it's like nature recycling. When a tree dies, or leaves fall on the ground, or animals die, they all turn into soil. And so new plants can use that soil and grow. So when you see lots of mushrooms growing on dead trees, because those mushrooms are actually helping it break down and decompose and turn into soil. And yep, this is moss. Why do we need soil? What do you mean? Soil, if we don't have soil, we wouldn't have plants. And plants provide us with food, medicine, medicine oxygen. The oxygen. Right? Soil is really important for all of us. Um, Very important. And do you know why, why uh, moss is growing right in the spot? You guys feel it? No, you can't feel it. Because, because, um, I think, I think we said it, ca it could cause disease. Nah, you can feel it. It won't hurt you. Ooh. Moss is very soft and it, it's like a sponge. So it grows where it's moist. You could touch it. Yep, yeah, you could touch it. I want to have you guys touch something if it wasn't safe. It's hard. Take a picture. No, I don't see it. You can touch it. It's on video. What? Don't do it again. No. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Is that from the lion bird or whatever? It's from a woodpecker. And it's just one feather, so that just tells me it just flew right by and it lost the feather. But if I found a whole bunch of feathers, that means what? What do you think that might tell me? Um, yeah. Just Something probably got it. But I just see one feather, so it happens. Like a feather. I don't know if you notice these big leaves that I are did. growing in the swamp. I have. I just saw a lot of big ones like that one. Like these big, big leaves. They look like big. The one tree that is like bamboo is old. And it's called skunk cabbage. Ew. Yeah, Ew. I and do you know why they call it skunk cabbage? Yes. No. How do you because, it's, because it's it smells no. terrible. Like that? Ooh. It makes me want to throw up my own mother. What? Oh! Wait, I just smelled it. Oh, God.
good. Oh, it's <laughs> about step four. It smells, oh, it smells good. Bad. Don't smell it. it smells this bad. smells really bad. Oh, oh, this. Are you? Oh. Miss Maggie, that smells good. My boss likes the smell of it. Uh oh. It's not so good. Oh my god. Does that smell like a skunk? It smells like something just No, that is No, oh my god, it's That's why it's called skunk cabbage. That's why it's called Can I smell it again? Does that smell like a skunk? Did that smell good? No. no. Yes. yes. And I know why they call it skunk cabbage. Right? And to let you guys know, not many things eat it, but we know that snapping turtles eat it. We know that the black bear eats it because it's one of the first green plants. I found another shiny wasp. Oh, a shiny what? What? Oh, yeah, that's a another type of beetle. Yeah. Let me see. Where? 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 It's right there. Oh, I see it. Move back. Move back. If you fall in, we're leaving you. I'm just letting you know. Where? 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 Behind you, you don't want that. You want to be next to someone. So if there's someone in front or behind you, you're kind of blocking your view. So you guys are actually blocking these guys here. Trying to record. Right? You guys know what a semi-circle looks like? Half circle. Half circle. So you want to squeeze in there. Ooh, you hear the chipmunks? They were just chipping. That's a chipmunk. Yeah, they were. There, there was two of them, and one's on the tree. See, he's hanging on the tree there. Don't see it. He's a, it's back there, the skinny tree. He's kind of like there's a skinny tree right behind the skinny tree. He's camouflaged. He's not moving. Yeah. Oh, camouflage. Two of them, and he's going. Dip, 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 dip. Those are two chipmunks. Good grandpa, dude. See, at the council. Yep. So you know what animal this is, right? Yeah. A deer. A white-tailed deer. I thought somebody said a reindeer. They did. Reindeer don't live in New Jersey. All right. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
And there's actually mark, two marks from rodents eating the bone. Like how I mentioned earlier. Wait, so they ate the reindeer? I mean the reindeer? Yeah, this is from a white-tailed deer. Reindeer antlers are much bigger. Ooh. Dang. You have to go oh, up north. Can I feel you have it? to go like to um it feels feel soft. Like Canada and Maine, I think, have caribou. Right. One at a time. You touch it, you move back and let somebody else touch it. That's it. I don't even get to touch it. Alright, go. Oh, she's pushing me. Oh, she's pushing you. Stop screaming. Excuse me. Yeah, come on in. Be quiet. Ooh. You were doing it too. So All right, so if you felt it, step back so I know who hasn't had a chance to feel the antler yet. Wait, what, is, what is that piece of wood? That's a part that's actually attached to their head. So I didn't go up to the deer and take it off. We find them on the ground already because they shed them, like losing a tooth, except they lose them every year. Their antlers look like wood. Put the flash back. Yeah, but it's all bone now. Did anyone have a chance to feel the antler? There you go. Anybody else didn't have a chance? I feel so fissy. A lot of people say that it feels like plastic, but it's bone. I feel It's actually bone. Bone in my spine. Miss Megan, how long when I was the animal do The animal This one. Wait, you're covering. Sorry. Um, Kai, Joshua, and Thorne. I don't want to have to move over to you know? next week. No, no, I just need more arms. Okay? So let's pay attention quiet. See what I want to do next? The water? The clothes? This is Fluffy the box turtle. We call her Fluffy because she's not fluffy. We know she's a girl because she's got a very flat bottom to her shell. The boys have a curved shell on the bottom. And the boys have bright red eyes. Those of you who are close, can you see that her eyes are kind of brownish? Yes. So that's how we know she's a girl. She's a box turtle. And those of you who are in my group, you remember I showed you how she had a high dome. Yes. Yes. If you, if you think about sports cars, Sports cars are kind of low and sleek and streamlined so they can go fast. And fishes are streamlined. Well, if this was a turtle that lived in the water, she would be thin and streamlined too. But she has this boxy shape because she doesn't need to be streamlined. She lives on land. Obviously, she needs water to drink, but she doesn't swim. She doesn't have the right kind of feet for swimming, and she doesn't swim. She may sit in mud or a little bit of a tiny puddle when it's hot to cool off, but she doesn't actually swim. She's called a box turtle because the front of her shell on the bottom is a hinge. And if she was scared, she's not scared now. Her head is out, her legs are out. She's doing the, the box turtle swim because she's up in the air. She wants to have her feet on land, so she keeps 
moving her feet, trying to find something solid. But if she was scared and she pulled her head in, this hinge on the bottom would allow the shell to come closed and be completely closed up. And I can show you a picture of that. It's okay. It's okay. Don't have a good picture. Oh well. Anyway, but she can't take my word for it. She can close up. Um, box turtles will eat insects, snails, millipedes, fruit, seeds, nuts, things like that. Um, They'll live in the leaves on the forest floor, but they want to be near water. They might be in a meadow someplace. Those are the kind of places they live. Now, um, I know my group knows, and I'm sure Miss Megan told the other group, we never harm anything here uh, at the visitor center in this park. We never take anything out of the wild. All animals, wild animals, belong wild. They don't make very good pets because, um, well, they're just not warm and cuddly. They're wild animals. And they're a lot happier outdoors in the wild. They know they're, they're, they come out of their shell knowing how to live outdoors in the wild. They know how to find food. They know how to be safe from predators. They know how to find everything they need. How to stay cool when it's hot and warm when it's cold. What can you tell me? Is, is Fluffy a, a reptile? Do you all know? Everybody? Yes. What can you tell me about the temperature of a reptile? Raise your hands. A lot of them will hibernate. Obviously, she's in her cage here, so she doesn't hibernate. Um, are they warm-blooded like you and me? No. 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 They're the same temperature as what's around them. So she knows, she's ha she comes out of her shell knowing how to stay warm when she needs to be warm and cool when she needs to be cool. Did you have a question? No. I was going to say that she was cold-blooded. Cold-blooded. That's right. So if it's not good, and in fact it's not legal, to take wild animals out of the wild, how come we have? That's a long snake. Oh my god. Quiet. Oh my god. Okay, everyone. This oh is Snuffy. We just named her to rhyme with Fluffy. We didn't know when we first got her that she was a girl, because you can't tell all of their organs are inside. They have a very smooth body on the outside, so you can't tell. But when she laid eggs, we found out she really is a girl. Um, snakes will lay eggs even if they have not made it. Kind of the way chickens lay eggs that are, are not able to hatch. So um, this is a corn snake. It's called a corn snake because farmers would find it um, by their, um, their bins where they store grain and corn. And, um, do you think that snakes eat corn? No. 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 They eat animals. They eat mice and other rodents. What do mice eat? Do they, do they eat corn? No. no. Wait, yes, yes. Yes. They, they work in the wild. One at a time, no spring. Everyone quiet down, please, so I don't have to shout. I know you're all excited. I'm glad you're really enjoying this, but I'd rather you didn't make me shout, okay? Um, mice will eat seeds, and corn is a kind of seed. Okay? She wants to climb up around my, my neck, and I don't but, um, and I can feel the scales on her belly. Can you take a look, can you see her belly? Have you ever seen Indian corn that people put out 
at Halloween and Thanksgiving? Yes. Does that look a little bit like corn? Yes. Her belly? She's got wide scales on her belly. Let me take questions at the end, okay? She's got wide scales on her belly. And she's got, she's got tiny muscles. One muscle for each scale. She's very strong. She's very muscular for her size. She's got about 200 ribs, so she's very flexible. And those muscles can, each muscle, each tiny muscle moves one scale on the belly. And that's how she moves. The scales are like, kind of like if you were to use your fingernails to dra drag yourself across the rug. Can you picture that? Can you imagine that? That's what her belly scales are like. And she can move each scale to do that. They can move actually pretty fast um, when they want to. She is not venomous. Um, she's Like I said, she's called a corn snake because she was always found near corn bins and because her belly scales look like corn. But she's a friend to the corn farmers because she eats the mice and rodents that would eat their corn. Um, but she's a constrictor snake. That means that she will um, lunge and bite a small rodent and hold on to it and then wrap her body around that rodent, that small animal, and squeeze it until it can't breathe anymore. And when it's dead, then she swallows it. She swallows her food whole. She can't chew. She can't chew her food. I can feel her belly scales on my, on my hand that she's using them to move. I think she's so cool. I think she's pretty. She's orange. She's got kind of red blotches on her back, and they're outlined in black. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but what is she doing with her tongue right now? She's sticking it out. She's sticking. sticking it out. Why? Why do you think she's sticking it out? What do you think? Because there's a little hole, so she she can't just like open her mouth wide. So she just had the the um, Don't touch your mouth, huh? the thing. It just goes out. Well, if when her mouth is closed, she has a little opening that's just big enough for her tongue. But she can open her mouth really wide. Imagine she can swallow a mouse. She can really open her mouth wide and her jaws open extra wide. And the hinge on the side of her jaw opens up. We can't do that because our upper and lower jaw is attached. But in the snake, they're not attached. They're not attached. And, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and so she can open her mouth really, really wide. But why is she sticking her tongue out? What does that do? No. No, she's curious. She's never met all of you, but she knows you're all here. And snakes have an excellent sense of smell. You know how your dog has a better sense of smell than you do? Now well, snakes have a very good sense of smell too. And they can tell people apart by this by their smell. Did you have a question? Somebody have I thought somebody had a hand. Okay. She's flicking her tongue out to smell all of you. She's curious about you. She wants to know who you are. And um, what kind of perfume you're wearing. Things like that, right? <laughs> Snakes have noses. They use their nose to breathe, just like we do. But they also use their tongue to smell. When you smell something, there, it's because there are little tiny particles of that thing in the air. And when the particles go into your nose, there are little uh, places in your nose where you can recognize what the smells are, what those tiny particles are. Well, she doesn't have that. She doesn't have that. So she flicks her tongue out into the air, and it's a, it's.